Hi everyone, um, today I wanted to show you the tench rig that I use for probably 90% of my, my fishing during the spring and summer. Um, it's sort of developed over the years, but it's something I've been using for getting on for 20 odd years now. Um, and it's a fairly uh, common rig that a lot of people use, just with a couple of modifications that I've made that I find it uh, a bit more efficient. Now, the story is that um, all those years ago I was fishing a lake um, almost to exclusive, exclusively to myself really, there was nobody else there, uh, even though it was just a club lake. And the tench were driving me nuts. The first year I fished it, I, I had tench rolling in front of me every day, and could I catch them? I tried everything I could possibly could, and nothing seemed to work. Now I was coming from a carp fishing background, so I was tending to use boilies and paste and bigger baits, stuff like that. And it was pretty obvious that the fish in that lake were preoccupied on natural food. And it was a very, very rich lake without a lot of other fish in it other than the tench. Uh, and all they wanted to do was eat natural food. And, and my bigger baits, however good they were, just, just weren't doing the business. Now, as luck would have it, just before the weed got so bad on the lake that it became unfishable, um, a magazine came out and there was an article in there by a chap called Eric Edwards um, and it turned out he'd been having a very similar problem the year before on the lake he'd been fishing um, and his solution to it um, was to fish with very short helicopter rigs and so it seemed like a good idea the reason behind it seemed pretty pretty sound and it sounded like he was having a similar problem to what I was having so I cobbled up together um, the best I could really of a similar kind of version of it and went back down to the lake for what turned out to be my last session of the year. And cut a long story short, I didn't rip the place apart. I, I caught one fish, six pounder, not, not massive, but it kind of broke my duck and, and opened the door a little bit to the fishing on there and, and gave me enthusiasm to come back the following year and really stick at it and see, see if I'd found the answer. So following year came back, I'd refined the rigs a little bit over the winter. Um, unfortunately that year the weed wasn't quite as bad so it was a bit more, more fishable for longer as well. And um, to cut a long story short, the difference it made was absolutely incredible. Whether the natural food wasn't quite as prevalent that year or whatever I don't know, but from the first session I fished I was into, into tench and big fish as well. Uh, and was averaging anywhere between sort of 5 and 10, 12 fish um, in a session, it was it was incredible fishing, um, and really, you know, once you've had an experience like that, you tend to stick with with what you know. And so this rig has sort of followed me, my tench fishing on various lakes really over the years, and most of them um, are quite similar. The gravel pits, very weedy, um, relatively low stocks of fish, um, lots of natural food, um, and crucially because. Um, this rig really works with maggot and worm hook baits. It is not a lot of small fish, either perch or roach, rudd, stuff like that, which are going to make fishing with naturals and, and, and small baits like maggots a real nightmare. So anyway, what is this, this magic rig? Well, you've probably seen versions of it a million times. It's, it's basically a feeder rig set up with a helicopter. Um, and I favour the Drennan Oval feeders. Depending on how far out I'm fishing, I'll vary the weight between one and two ounces. Um, my preference is really for the big size because it gets more maggots out there. Um, I'll then put on a towel rubber just to cover the swivel, which is otherwise a bit shiny. And then I have two float spot stops with a short hook length trap between the two. And it's, it's just enough room there for the swivel to move. Um, and the idea is in flight, that, that can helicopter. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but it's pretty tangle free. Um, now, what I'm using for the hook length is quite important. I tend to use a fluorocarbon for that, normally sort of 10 pound. Um, that might seem quite stiff, but bear in mind the hook length is only two to three inches long. It's very short anyway, so any suppleness is, is really by the by. Um, the reason for the relatively stiff, thick line is A, it's very strong. It's not going to uh, break on me. Um, I like the stiffness because it helps reduce tangles. And finally, because it's fluorocarbon, I only have to pass through the swivel eye and the hook eye once, which makes time very, very short, straight hook lengths a lot easier. If you try and go through twice, as you would with mono, you'll find it sort of pigtails and, and goes a bit crinkly. Um, on the hook, um, 
varies depending on the size of the bait and the amount of maggots I'm normally in, but again, nine out of 10 times, it'll be adrenaline super specialist in a size 12. Occasionally I'll go to a size 14 if I'm cutting down to two maggots, but generally the hook bait is three real maggots and a piece of rig foam cut to the same sort of size as a maggot just to pop it up. Um, and popping up is pretty crucial really. What I found is that brings three or four times as many bites as um, fishing with a bait on the deck. So it's fishing straight up, settles on the bottom and looks like that. And you'll have a spread of maggots coming out from the feeder covering about the area of a dinner plate. And that's the reason that I like the hook length uh, and the hook bait so close to the feeder. You can imagine that the maggots don't crawl as far, anywhere near as far as you might imagine. It really is kind of like a dinner plate, you know, eight inch, 10 inch area. And so I want my hook bait to be right in the center of that feed. And very often you'll find that you get bites on this rig very quickly as the tench actually home in and I'm sure you'll get twitches and knocks as they're knocking the feeder around and then pick up the hook bait. Now, why is it so effective? Well, I've, I've been lucky enough to do quite a lot of underwater filming with tench and it's, it's pretty obvious when you watch some of the film <coughs> why, why this rig works. And it's because, like Crucian carp as well, very similar, <coughs> they, they move around very slowly in the swim. It's not that they're being clever or anything, it's just the natural behaviour is they'll use their pecs just to move around. And all the time they'll be sucking in mouthfuls of food, whether it's naturals or maggots, casters, whatever, um, sorting it in the back of their mouth and then blowing out all of the rubbish, all of the bits of twig and stick, bits of leaf or whatever. And obviously to a tench, your hook length and a hook must feel like a stick. So as quickly as it takes it into its mouth, by hardly moving, it will then blow it out again. And so your chances of hooking them on a longer, on a longer link are very, very small. So going short, keeping the, the hook length close to the, to the bolt effect that you're getting from the feeder really makes a big difference. And that's about it really guys. Um, it's a brilliant rig, if you haven't used it, give it a go. Um, I've caught some very big fish on it now, quite a few doubles, um, including my personal best. So the only downside with it is if you're fishing in the margins because you're getting a bit of a lift on the line, um, which can, shouldn't, you know, it, it shouldn't really make a big effect, but it does seem to. So what I always do if I'm fishing in close, is just mould some tungsten putty up, uh, up the main line um, and really slacken the line off. I don't fish with a bobbin um, and get that line as slack as you possibly can and then it will work a treat. If you're fishing out in the lake, don't worry about it. I'll use a bobbin, fish it fairly tight, and the bites are fantastic. They're either screamers or, or massive dropbacks as the tench hooks itself and moves the feeder. So give it a go. I hope that's useful to you. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>